welcome friends today we are going to start our lecture on digital instruments so as the name suggests this topic covers electrical and electronic instrumentation as well as digital electronics so as you might be knowing that digital electronics is a big domain so for the sake of our convenience and requirement of this topic we will learn certain basic topics from digital electronics which will help us in understanding the functioning of digital instruments so the basic components which are used in digital instrumentation are crystal oscillators decade counter analog to digital converter voltage to frequency converter and phase lock loop so we will go through these topics one by one so let us consider today the crystal oscillator and decade counter so as you must be knowing the crystal oscillators are basically the crystal quartz clocks which are used to generate different frequency or clock timing for application in electronics and computers so as you can see in the left the figure one shows a model available in the market which is a 4 megahertz quartz crystal and its equivalent circuit can be shown in the figure on the right so you can see a quartz crystal is basically represented in this form and its equivalent circuit is shown by a series RLC circuit in parallel with the capacitor so if you see in the electrical domain we can generate timing signals or frequency signals using RLC circuits also but there are certain demerits of RLC circuit because of which we are using crystals quartz crystals so quartz crystals basically we require of the level of 1 megahertz but whenever we acquire crystal from the market it can be different from 1 megahertz like here it is 4 megahertz so in that case we use a frequency divider circuit that is again an electronic circuit which generates the crystal clock frequency of our choice so this quartz crystal has the benefit of very high temperature stability maybe of the rate of 10 power minus 8 per degree celsius and it is as compared to the lc circuit or rc circuit its performance is always better so it is having high temperature temperature stability stability of the range of 10 power minus 8 per degree celsius and superior rear temperature temperature stability stability with respect to with respect to lc or rc timing circuits so let us see an example of application of quartz crystal so a typical example of quartz crystal is in generating the timing signal here in the figure we can see that a quartz crystal is provided for timing signal and it is used for time synchronized signal to be generated at the output of electronic devices so here we are using a NAND gate so basically the inductor capacitor type oscillators produce high frequency than the register capacitor type oscillators but the high frequency produced by lc circuit has low temperature stability and its operation is limited to temperature variation so we use the piezoelectric crystals in all our digital systems or digital applications or computer based applications so these two points are vital 
first one that lc oscillator lc oscillator generally produces high frequency produces 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 high frequency as compared to as compared to RC oscillator but again in case of LC oscillator again in case of LC oscillator as we have already mentioned that it has low temperature stability as low temperature stability stability so so we prefer we prefer quartz crystals or crystal oscillators crystal oscillators in electronic electronic and digital applications digital applications so quartz crystal are widely used for generating the required frequency or pulses for operation of the digital circuits so the next one is the counters which are widely used in the circuits especially when we are using the digital circuits so most of the in most of the cases we use the decade counters however we can use counters for dividing a frequency by 2 by 5 or multiples of these so we can gen develop frequency divider of any count it can be even uh, uneven number prime number any number can be produced using these counters so here in uh, electrical instrumentation our main purpose is to see how ticket counters are working basically for digitization of the measurement techniques so we'll take an example of Decade counter, however, there are many different counters available depending upon its subcomponent that is the flip flop. Flip flop is the subcomponent of the counters. So, you might be knowing about flip flops, or in the subject of digital electronics, you'll be learning in detail about flip flops and how they can be used for development of different counter kind of counters. So, there are D kind of flip flops, there are SR flip flops, there are toggle flip flops, there are JK flip flops. So, for the sake of designing, we will study here SR flip flops, which are used for designing the decade counters. So, let us see first how a flip flop operates or reacts to certain inputs. So, whenever we are speaking about flip flop, let us start with SR flip flop. So in SR flip flop we basically have here the SR flip flop I am drawing and these are the two inputs which are the S and R set and reset inputs. So these are the two inputs to the SR flip flop and we have the outputs. The output that is you can say is Y or Q and this is the inverted output this is the q bar so we use flip flops by referring to its this is the basically electronic circuits using transistors so you have back to back couple transistors to then develop digital circuits so we basically focus on the truth table of the flip flop so in the truth table we have s we have R 
and you have q i take q bar also q bar so you must be knowing that when there are two inputs which are digital we can make uh, a set of four from these two inputs so this is input one this is input two so you can make a cup set of four zero 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 one one zero and one one <coughs> so these four inputs are given to the flip-flop and the outputs are recorded so here in case of sr flip-flop we are trying to inhibit the input one one but all the three inputs are made use of so if both the inputs are zero zero so both the inputs are zero zero so this output will not change so it will show the last value the last value so both the outputs will show the last value when this input is zero and one means reset is zero and set is one then the output will appear as one so q is one so q bar is zero similarly when the reset point is one it means you are sending a signal for reset of the flip-flop so in this case you will get you should have a zero and the output should be set to zero so its inverter is one so you can see that both reset and set cannot be sent signal one because we don't want to reset and set at the same time either we reset or we set or we don't do anything so these three are the set of outputs for the corresponding inputs when we are using a synchronized operation of the flip-flop so we use another input to the flip-flop which is uh, called the age triggered input so we give a pulse clock pulse will be given and according to the triggering of the clock pulse the flip-flop will work so in that case we use another input in the flip-flop which is called t and t will be basically a pulse of a clock output it will be a pulse of the clock output so it can be positive as triggered or negative as triggered positive as triggered means when it is rising the flip-flop will trigger and negative as triggered means when it is falling the flip-flop will trigger so in our example of the ticket counter we will consider a negative as triggered a sub type of flip-flop so let us draw the basic circuit of the flip-flop how it is connected to be used as a ticket counter so let us draw a sub type of flip flop how the sub type type of flip flop will be connected so i'm preferring to draw the first flip-flop here on the right this is the first flip-flop we are using four flip-flop for ticket counter so this four flip-flops first one will have output a and a bar so this will have set reset and trigger or toggle so here you will give the input pulse from the clock input pulse input pulse from the clock will come here and its output is taken to the next stage so we can decide uh, design different different kinds of flip-flops uh, different different combinations of flip-flop to develop a decade counter it is not a unique design you can have infinite number of designs based on your choice of the flip-flops so here i am using one design this is and gate i am using and gate and gate so here this output is taken and it will be taken further the other input of the AND gate will come from some other place so I will show it later let me first connect all the flip-flops 
let me first connect all the flip flops this is b b bar these two inputs are set reset and in between toggle is there so always i, I will be firing the toggle input or trigger input so now this should go to the next stage so uh, this is b this is flip flop c and c is c and c bar this is srt str and this output from the second flip flop will go to the triggered input of the third one and again from the third one it should go to the fourth flip flop like this so you have d d bar s r and t and from c output you take it to the trigger input to the d flip flop so we have the four outputs to be recorded this is the output d this is the output c and this is the output b this is output b and this is before end and get this is the output a this is output a now this reset will get a reset signal from the inverted output of the first flip flop and this d bar the inverted output of the last one will come back to trigger the end gate so this is how the circuit will work sorry circuit will be connected now we will discuss how the circuit is going to work for that let us make a table so we can make a table like this let us go a little above like this so we know that this is d i am writing d again here so that we can have the thing with us this is d so here i am making a table so let it let me make the table of d c b a and d bar c bar b bar a bar right so i have a connection of four flip-flops and one and gate where the flip-flops are negative as triggered so the pulse input pulse should be negative as triggered means the if the input pulse is coming to the flip-flop when the pulse is falling then the flip-flop will trigger now initially we have the value of dcba as zero this is the starting point so naturally this is the inverted output we should keep it one now the first pulse is coming so when the first pulse is coming then this is applied to the t input terminal of the flip-flop a that is rs flip-flop and it changes state on the negative going edge of the pulse this at the end of the first pulse the state of the flip-flop should be modified as so i can write end of uh, end of end of pulse i can write ep so end of pulse so first flip-flop should be output should be changed as the end of the plus pulse so it should be zero 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 one right so the other one is the only the inverted of this one 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 zero so once this output is you are getting the two inputs to the and gates are a and d bar and both are at one you can see that this output this output which is coming this is already one and now the out now this a is also becoming one so and gate is having the inputs one and one at this point of time okay so let us see when this input is one 
what happens so naturally that uh, this and gate is enabled because of these two inputs and a positive going pulse is applied to the T terminal of the second flip flop that is the B flip flop and because it is a positive going pulse so it will not trigger so this value will the output of the flip flop B will remain to be the same as earlier that is the zero and same is the case for DAC and D flip flop also so on the application of the second pulse A goes from 1 to 0 so, so once the second pulse sees the negative edge it goes from 1 to 0 so let us see how the values are changed at the end of the second pulse so this is the end of pulse 1 this is end of pulse 2 so at the end of pulse 2 this A is changed from 1 to 0 so because A is changed from 1 to 0 so at that time you will see that the output the in uh, output of flip flop B should be changed from 0 to 1 and the others are still 0 so you we write the inverted of this 1 1 0 1 so one, once this is 1 1 0 1 means the D bar is 1 D bar is 1 and A is 0 so AND gate is disabled so on the application of third pulse the flip flop A changes the state from 0 to 1 again because for every change of triggering pulse A, A will change because it is directly getting the triggering pulse but the AND gate is closed at this point of time therefore the flip flop B, C and D and their, their states will remain as it is so at the end of third pulse we say that B, C, R, C, D are same, B is same but A has been changed from 0 to 1, it's like this. So we write the inverted of this 1, 1, 0, 0. Once A is 1 because D is 0 for a long time because for each pulse we are getting, you see that from here to here we are gradually getting the number changed first is 0000, then it is 0001 now gradually the number is increasing 0 0 then 1 then it is becoming 2 then it is becoming 3 so the time to reach d become 1 is little ahead right so till that time we are having the output d0 and d bar is always 1 so whenever a is 1 then the and signal is and gate is enabled so now we see that a becomes 1 and d bar is 1 so again the AND gate is enabled so now on the application of fourth pulse a goes from 1 to 0 then flip flop b changes and it goes from 1 to 0 so thus the negative going pulse is applied to flip flop c and its state changes from 0 to 1 let us see how it is happening so here at the end of pulse 4 so a will change from 1 to 0 1 to 0 right so because of that because get is enabled so flip flop b will change from 1 to 0 and because b is changing from 1 to 0 we can see here we can see at this point b is changing from 1 to 0 so the flip flop c is triggered once flip flop c is triggered then 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 its c output will change its value from 0 to 1 so it is if flip flop c is changing its value from 0 to 1 but d is still 0 so we write the inverted of this 1 0 1 1 now because now a is 0 so get is disabled so naturally on the application of the fifth, fifth uh, pulse flip flop a will change its state from 0 to 1 and because a and gate is disabled so the no pulses are applied to flip flop a b c d and then therefore remain they remain in the original state so a is changed at the end of fifth pulse a is changed from 0 to 1 but others remain same 
so we write the inverted of this one zero one zero right now both a and d bar are, bar are enabled so once it means both a and d bar are one so and gate is enabled so once and gate is enabled then what will happen at the advent of the sixth pulse a changes state from one to zero naturally it triggers the um, flip-flop b so since and gate is at this time and gate is open so so once and gate is open means your the change the flip-flop c and d will remain unchanged because the s triggering c and c will trigger only when the this edge is changed from the input to the c trigger is changed from 1 to 0 it means that a is changed from 1 to 0 b is changed from 0 to 1 but c and d are remained unchanged this is at the end of 6 well 6 so we write the inverted of this 0 0 0 1 so now the next pulse now because this and gate is now closed means disabled so we see that when the next pulse comes then the value of a changes from 0 to 1 and this is a positive s trigger so it will not make change for the uh, further any pre flop so here only a is changed so at the end of pulse 7 we see that only a is changed others are as it is so i write the inverted of this like this now once we got the seventh pulse over next the sixth eighth pulse arrives now because the and gate is again enabled because both d bar and a are one so on the application of the eighth pulse flip-flop a goes from one to zero and because of this a negative pulse is applied to flip-flop b and which changes from one to zero the output of flip-flop b is applied to flip-flop c so it is getting trigger so which is it is this is the negative going pulse so again out of output of c will change so the negative pulse is applied to the flip-flop d because c is changing from one to zero so the d will toggle so naturally now at the end of the pulse eight a changes naturally every time it changes and d goes goes negative because of the negative pulse negative edge trigger c is also negative edge trigger so d b0 c0 and d is also negative edge triggered now so the d becomes one so now we can write it 0 1 1 1 the inverted outputs so once it becomes sorry this d should be one because this is the input inverted output one d one d is one so d bar is zero triple one okay now both a and d bar are zero so and gate is disabled so once and gate is disabled since the input to the and gate are both zero so it, it is disabled on the application of the ninth pulse what will happen flip flop a changes to the state from 0 to 1 since and gate is closed the three flip flops b c and d remain to their original position means to their original values so by the end of the ninth pulse what we can see only a is changing so end of pulse 9 we'll see that only a is changing to 1 others remain same okay so here 0 110 is the inverted outputs 
now we see that the and get is having inputs of 1 and 0 so thus thus on the application of thus on the application of the 10th pulse a changes state state from 1 to 0 so once a changes state from 1 to 0 but and gate is disabled so no pulse is applied to flip flop b or c and they remain at the original state see that a changes from 1 to 0 so a bar is set to 1 this one will reset the d flip flop so once the d flip flop is reset then the output d will become 0 so here we can see that at the end of pulse 10 what will happen s changes from 1 to 0 and so a bar becomes 1 and it resets the d flip flop so once it resets d flip flop it becomes 0 and other two are already 0 so it is again reaching its initial state that is the starting point where again we will apply the starting pulse so thus this set of flip-flops will produce a decade counter by resetting the counter after every 10th pulse so that is how we can design a decade counter and as I already mentioned that decade counters can be designed by different means you can use uh, different flip-flops other than SR flip-flop to design the decade counters so this much is for today and in the coming lecture we will discuss other components of digital instrumentation so this is the textbook by professor ak sawane on electrical and electronic measurements instrumentation that you can refer to and today's content has been taken from the same book so if you find the lecture useful raise the like button and of course, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe and set the bell icon for notifications. You can always send me email for any queries on emmifaq at the red gmail.com. My students can send me WhatsApp message or they can contact me through my mobile number. Thank you for your patient listening.